guitar practice session 10 7 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on and then provide a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This of course being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help to generate a routine, verbalize what I'm trying to be learning to get it in my mind better, possibly provide information to others who are working on similar types of stuff, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the types of things that I'm doing here, remembering that our practice sessions might look a little bit different in that I'm trying to organize everything so we can visualize the fretboard as easily as possible from the perspective of holding the guitar where we're behind the guitar where we have the low string on top the heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling, which will match what is on the fretboard. Imagine it here that we take our fretboard that we're holding and just imprint it onto the screen so that we have the low or heavy string on top and the same orientation top to bottom, left to right. I'm also gonna flip my guitar on the screen so it looks like I'm left-handed. So once again, you can see the frets that will be in the same order as your perspective from behind the guitar top to bottom and uh, left to right. We're gonna be looking at position, what I would call four once again. We'll describe different ways to name that position. This time looking at the major scale, otherwise known as mode number one, Ionian, which you might think you already know like the Ionian mode or the major scale, but it's really important to understand uh, all of the different basically uh, intervals related to it over here as well as the different modes because what I'm going to be doing is basing all other positions and modes using the key of the Ionian or major key as a point of reference in a similar way as if we're trying to organize ourselves in space and time. No one space is any more important than any other space but you have to orientate yourself some way so that you can measure things relative to the position that you are in. Remember that when we're in these modes, what's really kind of happening is we're moving through the modes and they're all connected together, kind of like a fractal image, basically. And the, and the problem is that we don't know where we are relative to everything else, and that's when we get lost. One way to basically orientate ourselves is to use something like the major scale as that point of orientation. To do that, then of course we have to memorize basically the modes related to the major key and the intervals so that we can then make comparisons and have all the other modes and intervals compared to it, looking at the distinctions as the defining factor. This is how the other modes are different from uh, the major, for example. So we'll dive into that uh, a bit. And then we'll go into the, the, to the shapes inside here using our two analogies, which are gonna be the house analogy and the five note uh, pentatonic analogy, two, two ways to break out the fretboard that are commonly used. I'm just trying to put a, a, a story around it so we can memorize it. And also noting that I'm, we're, we're really focusing on the shapes because on the guitar, like on a spreadsheet, all the shapes are movable if we were to go to another key or scale. So I'm not spending a whole lot of time memorizing the notes, although that's cool to do and everything, but it's if I know where all the relative shape positions are related to relative modes, all of that stuff shifts the same way, the same orientation, uh, like copying a cell in Excel when we go to a different key. So that's why that's, why that's useful, that's why it's interesting to me and more important really in some ways to learn that. That's what I'm kind of focused in on. And then we'll break things up by jumping on over to this shape where we're gonna be looking at the same major scale mainly, but in this lean back two note per string shape, just to get an idea of how we can view the fretboard and use our same kind of breakout of like this house analogy to then think about how the two note per string analogy or way of making the same notes fits on top of it and how we can start to integrate the shapes that we break the guitar into typically, which are the five shapes along the fretboard into, into different types of way that we can see a pattern in Excel so that we can integrate that possibly into the way we're viewing the fretboard. And then we'll also do that with the three note per string shape, same idea. We're gonna take, here's our box house analogy 
what if I change the rules a little bit so we have three notes per string for every string? And how can I start to visualize the fretboard this way and still be able to integrate it into what I'm doing with my five standard positions? What are the pros and cons? So we'll discuss that a, a little bit and just focus in on the major skills. And then we go through back on over here, we go through the intervals. Every time we go through the intervals, we take a look at the related modes and where those modes live in respect to our shapes over here because all of that is movable. And so just trying to get some practice uh, in on that and learn the interval shapes. We only go one time through uh, the interval. So I'll go backwards uh, the other way tomorrow. And then I move to this one, which is where I'm gonna be looking at all of the modes that are complement modes around one note, in this case, the key of A. So instead of looking at the related modes, complement modes that will build by interval. So we kind of see the application of using the interval. So we'll look at the major key and then look at the related uh, major modes, the Lydian, to like look at the one difference and see how that creates a whole different shape. And then we'll go to the Mixolydian, and, which is a major mode, which has a one difference interval and look at how that creates a whole different shape. And then we'll go to the minor mode, Aeolian mode, and compare it to the major mode. Once we have these intervals, we can compare them to the other two minor modes, which is the Dorian, which only has one distinct uh, interval difference from the main minor, Aeolian, and see how that makes a whole different shape. And then we'll look at the Phrygian, which is a minor mode, which only has one distinct difference from the main minor mode, Aeolian. See how that makes a whole distinct shape. And then consider how we might use that, which I kind of mess up on, but I'm trying to get in my mind how you can use these two ways of using the modes to do something more interesting musically, possibly than staying in one mode all the time, because you can, you can move to the related modes or you can remove to these complementary modes and you can imagine that if you do that, you can make a subtle move between all ever, all different scales if you, if you think about the relationship, because again, it's like a fractal pattern, right? If I moved, if I moved from the major key to, to a related major mode, like the Mixolydian, then it's a pretty subtle move. And once I've done that, now I'm in Mixolydian, I can subtly move to all of the different modes related to the Mixolydian which is a different set of modes related to the major. And I can look at the distinctive modes in Mixolydian that might be different than the major. And then I can move to, to those modes, right? I can, I can move into there. So these are just ways that you can kind of travel around. You don't have to be in one mode. You could go to the other modes without having a very sharp, distinct turn by basically using the complementary modes and the related modes. Continuing on with what I would call shape number four, looking at what I would call mode number one, the Ionian mode, otherwise known as the major scale, remembering that I'm gonna be using an absolute mode numbering system based on the major scale or Ionian mode. Therefore, if we say that the Ionian mode or major scale is mode number one, the other modes are gonna be numbered as they are related to the major scale or mode number one Ionian which in the case where we're actually in the major scale means that the numbering system will tie out to the relative positions, the first through the seventh in that scale. But when we go to other modes, such as the Dorian, for example, here's the Dorian, then we can see we still have the relative positions, the first through the seventh, but the notes are going to be changing. We're kind of going around the circle and we're going to have then our modes, which will be listed. We have the same seven modes, but instead of using the new numbering system for the modes related to the Dorian, I'm going to keep that absolute numbering system based on the major scale, which is kind of a convention. It's kind of like picking somewhere in the universe in terms of physics to be measuring from because we need to orientate ourselves even though the major scale isn't really special, just like any space in space time is not exactly special either, but you need to be able to orientate yourself so that we can measure from a particular perspective. And that's what we in Western music often use the major key to do as we kind of then go around these other modes. So that's that's the idea. So that means that it's really important then for us to really have down 
all the kind of components of the major scale so we can compare everything else to it. Meaning, we want to know the relative positions. We've got the first through the seventh here. We've got the modes. And when we look at the modes, I have the numbering system, which you might first just start to memorize from a practical standpoint in terms of if I'm in the major scale and I was going to make a chord off of each of these notes, which are relative to the positions, the first through the seventh, do I construct a major chord, a minor chord, or is it that crazy diminished chord? And to know that, we can we can just memorize in the major scale that the one, uh, four, five are going to be major chord constructions. And that means that the two, three, six are minor chord constructions. And the seven is then the crazy Locrian. That's just that is really nice to know for for music uh, creation. Like if you're just trying to make a simple song in a key of a major key, then you need to be able to just pick the notes in the major key and know whether you're going to be using a triad that's a major triad or a triad that's a minor triad. And then once we have that idea down, once we know those relative positions, we can then use the absolute mode numbers to apply that same concept when we say go to the Dorian mode or we go to the Phrygian mode because then I can start to memorize the relative positions of the one, four, five being major to the major scale so that I can then possibly create songs in other modes and still be able to determine whether the notes in those songs should have a major or minor chord constructed from them. Now beyond that then, I also could tie out that concept because what that means if it's a major or minor chord just means that it has a major or minor third. That's what it means to be a major or minor chord. Now notice I can go beyond that. What if I want to go beyond the third? Then of course, I, I can say I can assign a mode to each of these. So now I'm getting more specific and just saying, well, it's going to be the one, four, five. It's going to be major to uh, the two, five, six. I mean, the, the, <laughs> the one, four, the, the two, three, six is going to be minor. Instead of doing that, I'm going to say, well, the two is a minor chord, but it's actually the Dorian mode. Why is that more specific? Because now I can look at every interval related to the D, not every interval for a minor scale, that would be the Aeolian, but I'm looking at every interval for the Dorian, which has one key, one interval that's different. So we're going to keep on kind of going over that concept so that we can basically work on just pivoting around in our mind uh, through these different ideas. So that means that we have to basically memorize the major intervals here. And if we memorize the major intervals, then we can we can then memorize the minor intervals, which are just going to be all of the major. So this would be the ordering that I would start to memorize the intervals within. Why are the intervals important? Because that's one way that you can see the scale creation. And it's one way that you could build uh, chords that are more complex than like a triad. So if I want to add other notes into a chord or something, then I can know what fits by knowing the intervals, right? And then I can name the intervals that are different for each of the related modes, allowing me to know if I'm playing something that's in key or not, right? So, so how do I learn the intervals? Well, I think it's easiest to learn the intervals first on the major. So that's what we want to memorize now which is easier because the major key has all major named intervals or perfects. So basically there's two perfects, the perfect fourth, and the perfect fifth, and the perfect first, which is like not even really an interval because it's kind of like at the same spot. And then everything else is major, major second, major third, uh, major six, and major seven. Now I would go beyond that because I'm gonna start to memorize the actual distance in the smallest units that we deal with such as if we were in American measuring system for inches, then we would want to be measuring in inches or s centimeters in a metric system, right? I want to know how many of the base units away it is. Otherwise, on a guitar, because we have our shapes that aren't linear as they are on a piano, we lose that. We, start, we don't see the fact of how many steps it is away unless we consciously say it to ourselves so, and if we do that, then we can see how the guitar is put together and that gives us more insight. Whereas on a piano, it's pretty straightforward how many steps away it is because it's all linear. It's be like one string. The piano's like a one string layout. So 
that's gonna so that's what we'll do so we're gonna learn the major and then you learn the minor uh because the minors are gonna have all the same intervals except all of the non-perfects are going to be minors except for the second which is still a major second so that's kind of a pain once i know the intervals for the major and the minor then i can look at the other modes i can compare the major modes lydian and mixolydian to the major scale and there's only going to be one interval one interval i'm trying to find where i put my finger that it'll it'll still show up right one interval <laughs> that will be different on the on on the on the on the other two from the major scale and then we can look at the minor scales the dory and the phrygian comparing them not to the major key but to the minor key and again there's only going to be one interval that will be different so that sounds like a whole lot of things to kind of take in but if you take it one step at a time as we're doing here and just kind of practice like you don't even need an hour a day a few minutes a day this stuff is will start to come together as it's doing for me right so i think it's coming together so in any case so that's going to be it so so we have a perfect first and then we've got a two note away major second we got a four note away major third we got a five note away perfect fifth a seven i mean i'm sorry five note away perfect fourth i always do that because it's a five and a fourth it's but then we have a seven note away perfect fifth a nine note away major six and 11 note away uh, major seven we're going to be in position four, which you can see an open position, but the finger is a little bit different because our fingers are shifted up. Highly recommend kind of analyzing the open position, which I've been somewhat neglecting here as I've been working up in fret 12, where the guitar repeats, because then I can see it. I can see the whole shape and, and finger the whole shape. So that's what I want to practice uh, for the most part, although I'll try to go to the open position sometimes, and that would be a good thing to learn even if I don't do that you might want to do that so so then within so this shape is I call it shape four because from a generic standpoint if I call this shape one two three this would be four so I'm just counting up with a generic like the rock and roll shape being one that's a convention but like like any other convention like the using the absolute numbering system for the modes it it works but you could use other conventions too. Everybody has their own opinions and some people are quite adamant about their opinions on how you should call the shapes or whatever. But, uh, but in any case, you might use the cage system, which uses the open shapes, remembering that the open shapes are three note chords and they only fit uniquely into a five note pentatonic. So remember, if you use that system, you have to be thinking about the pentatonic and then putting on top of it the, t the two added notes. Otherwise, the shape will fit because it's only three notes into more than one seven note shape. It only fits into one five note shape of these shapes. And in this case, it's a C because if I if I look at the relative, uh, if, if I well, I'm in the key of C, but if I and that's my Ionian because I'm in the major key. But if I start from there, there's our C shape, which I can also see basically up here, but it's hard to finger on the acoustic guitar because I don't have a cutout or anything up top and I'm just gonna deal with it. So you might call it that. Uh, you might also call it the Phrygian shape, which I'm starting to, I think that's a useful way to do it because if I start on that top note and played through the scale in this shape, that would be Phrygian, which you can tell by the distinctive minor second. You might also call it a second note uh, Lydian shape because if I started on the F, I'd be playing in Lydian. And that is important to note. And it's something that a lot of people don't really realize because there's only, there's only five shapes and there are uh, seven modes. That means that of the five shapes, we're going to have to have one of the, you know, some of the shapes are going to have two modes associated with them and so this one is going to be one so anytime you see a major scale it usually has a minor mode associated unless you're looking at the uh the aeolian shape is kind of does its own thing man i mean not the aeolian the mixolydian shape so for example this one if you start on the first note it's going to be a minor anytime you see these two notes next to each other then that's the indication that it's going to have a minor mode and a major mode for that shape because I have the same problem here with the major shape 
shape number two, which you might call like an E shape type of position because it would be an E bar chord. And so, so, so I can start it here, but the, the, if I started it from the one behind it, it wouldn't be a minor mode necessarily. It would be the diminished mode, which is kind of like a minor mode because it still has a minor third uh, to it. So nobody really plays the Locrian in and of itself. You don't hear songs in Locrian typically, although you might be able to try that for, for the fun of it, but, but it still would be basically that mode. All right, and so that's gonna be the idea. And then within this shape, we're gonna be breaking it out into, remember there's five strings on the guitar plus a repeated E string. So that means if I break the shape out into its clusters, there's two ways I commonly see people doing this. They, they break it out into what I would call a seven note, uh, uh, it, what I would call a seven note cluster, which is gonna have two strings, two strings, and one string. And that's what I call the house analogy. Seven note house analogy has a double stop box shape. It has a box double stop shape. And it has the one two note per string flat shape within it. That's useful to see because then if I can identify these notes like that are in the box, then I can start to assign the modes to them to see where the modes live. And that will allow me to be able to, to see the shape from different areas within the guitar not based on the notes per se, but based on the relative positions of the shape so that I can then change the whole shapes as I go to a different place on the guitar or even to different modes on the guitar. If I go to a G major, then all that happens just like a, this is a spreadsheet, right? All the things just shift up like a spreadsheet and all the relative cells basically are, are switched up. And so if I can know if I if I can see this box in the key of G, then I still know that the top right cell, which will be a G in that case, will be the, the major. And then behind it will be the Locrian. And then the Lydian's down here and the Phrygian's down here. That's why on the guitar it's useful to, to know the relative positions. Uh, it's not quite the same on like a piano. Piano has its own advantages, vast advantages on the piano, you can play with the two hands and play, you know, you get octaves and stuff. We're grabbing whatever we can find on the guitar, but the benefit of the guitar is that those shapes move around like a spreadsheet as we go from one key to another key, from like to the key of C to the key of G, same shapes. It's just like, it's so that's cool. Uh, that's an advantage that we can have. One, one of, of, you know, there's a lot of advantages again of the piano one of the few advantages maybe we have. so we have that and then so so the other way you can see it is what i would call the pentatonic shape which mo which i call the hamburger uh barbell shape which is breaking up the fretboard into a a three string and a two string most people see the the, the three string kind of hamburger is what i think people often visualize right so if i'm looking at pentatonics then I'm usually going to be visualizing like this shape. I'm putting it over here because we have the kink in the tuning or the fault line that shifts it up. So here's here's going to be our our shape there, and then the barbell shape, which is in the green, where we only play the outer notes of the barbell. Now, if we play the five note pentatonic, you'll note that the C fits uniquely into the pentatonic shape here, even though we've removed two notes. And then we just simply add the two notes going from a five note pentatonic to a seven note. All right, given that, we're gonna go through our, our intervals from top to bottom like we typically do. But before we do, I wanna go back and imagine the same concept of these shapes looking at the scales from a different perspective just to switch things up in our mind uh, and have some variations in what we're looking at. And also just to note that this isn't the only way to see it, right? We're trying to see it multiple different ways. So another way we can see it is that lean back shape that I've been working on. So that's gonna be over here, what I call the lean back uh, shape. And let's go to the top of it. So let's go to this one. I'm gonna say, let's copy this and paste. So in this case, uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that the rules that we follow 
for the shape that we're working on over here are that we're gonna go we're gonna go up as far as we can on one string until we we span until we're forced to span more than five frets and then I'm never gonna stand five frets I'm only gonna go four frets never five that ends up with you can see here three notes on a string three notes on a string three notes on a string this one I could I has like here's three notes on a string you would think that well and then this one has two notes on a string you would think I could go up to here but that would be five frets out therefore we go back here that's the thing that keeps it in one column given the structure of this thing uh, in this case I'm gonna I'm gonna have a rule of only going two notes per string so if I if I look at the key of C we start in the same spot I'm gonna see this box right here and I'm gonna be looking at the key of C and and so I still start in the same spot and then we go up to the D and then instead of going up to the next one we, we wouldn't do that either way if I was in shape number two this is going to be what I call shape number two because that would be reaching past four frets so we go back here that would be same with shape number two and then I go here and if I was in shape number two I would go to this one because that does not violate the three notes per string or not violate going past five four frets but here we only want two notes per string therefore instead of that G we go back here and then we go here and then instead of going to that B because that violates both the four frets as well as the two notes per string so we go back here then we go here and then instead of going here we're going to go back and you can see this is what I call the lean a lean back chord shape and it's kind of easy to build because I can say if that's my C I can just say how do I build a major chord if I was to lean back there's the one there's a major third there's the fifth so it would look like that alright and then if I look at the, the the next one the Dorian that's a minor the second is a minor so if I start from that D then I can say that would be a minor key so it'd be a one a minor third and a five and there it is so if I all I'm doing is connecting these two chord shapes together and playing them one to one the one of the first to the one of the second the three of the first to the three of the second uh, the five of the first to the five of the second and that's going to be giving us our shape right so we have uh, one what am I in the right spot yeah one two three four five six seven eight so then I had to add this one you know this one down here so that's going to be our, our our shape and notice what it does is it moves from what I would call shape number two and then you can see this purple shape is is shape number uh, one and then it moves back to shape number five and it crosses over those shapes we can also go the other way right I can say this is going to be uh, C or eight seven six five uh four what is it eight seven six five four three two one so I, i'm still kind of messing with this to get my fingering uh right on that but so we have it going both ways and, and again i could keep on going up but for this time i want to just look at the intervals and just see what the intervals look like compared to the c right so what do we have in the key of C? We've got a we've got a major second, and then we've that's normal. That's what we would have if we did uh, shape number two, and then we have a major third. That's normal. So four note away major third, and then we have uh, a five note away perfect fourth, and and the five note away perfect fourth is right underneath. That's normal. And then we have a seven note away uh, perfect fifth, which normally I would be going up to that G right there, right? That would be the power chord. That's where the difference is. Where's the perfect fifth going when I do the lean back? We're going back here. So now we're going, okay. Five note away, uh, seven, that's a seven note away perfect fifth. And then we go to the nine note away uh, major six so that's gonna be here we're 
back kind of within the shape of shape number so that's our normal major six and then the seven uh is going to be the b and instead of going to this b here we're going to this b back here so that's a bit of a stretch for the seven <laughs> But if I, so notice what happens here is it, it's a little bit stretchy for us to play, right? I can play this, this here, but if I want to grab something else, I don't have, I don't have, I'd have to reach way back here to get like the seven. And then I, I could do that, maybe use my open strings. That sounds funny. It would be. sound too bad and then but anyways then I get back to the octave which is right here boom boom and so I can move I can move that up I'm just throwing in that open G because I have this open string which I could try to mute so so you can start to build you know the chords with a di little bit different structure than normally when when I start to build the chords out, I would be building this way with the key of C and I would see everything this way, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. This way, oftentimes you wanna break the chord out so that you don't have as many strings possibly or add different variations. Anyways, let's also look at the three note per string just to round this out. So now, same kind of idea, but this time, the rule is three notes per string no matter what. So I don't care about the, the spanning past four frets. So if I start on the key of C, what happens? I go one, two, and normally I would be in position two, which means I would violate the rule to go out to this one because that would span more than four frets, therefore I would go back here. But in, in this case, I'm gonna do that. So notice if you're playing in the major key, that's why you have that, that uh, major third out here. And then it goes back, so now I'm on the inside of the box. So it started at the same spot, but I'm ignoring the back of the box. And then we go here, and then we go here, and boom, and then back. So let's take a look at our intervals on this one. So now, once again, here, where's my, my major second is the same. Two note away, major second. Let's copy this and paste it here. And then the third is going to be a three note away, major third. So now I'm up here instead of back here. So even if I'm seeing myself in position, what I would call position two, or you might in the caged system call it the, the C shape or the major shape, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I, a major shape or C shape, I'm sorry, E major shape, then uh, <clears throat> then you could reach out here to get that third and still then come back into this shape, right? That's useful. And then I could go down and then, so then we're gonna go into the inside. We're not gonna go to that E back here because we already hit it. So that's gonna be the perfect fourth. So that's gonna be the five note away perfect fourth. And then the the, Wait a sec, yeah, five note away, perfect fourth. And then the seven note away, perfect fifth. There's our power chord. And then the sixth. Now, instead of me going back here for the sixth, I'm gonna stretch out. So now I've got this sixth out here. Nine note away, major six. And then the seven, 11 note away, seven is still gonna be uh, back here. So that's the normal right before. And then the octave. So then we can do that same, we could do the same thing from here. Notice if I start from here, I'm basically starting on the second note in the shape as I repeat over again. So if I look at that C, now I've got what's the second from there. I've got the two note away major second. And then we've got then the third 
is gonna be, notice now I'm not reaching up to this one because I started on the B, right? I kind of started as though I'm in the Locrian mode when the second round comes around. So it's kind of circling. It's kind of going around in a circle. It's not always starting in the same spot. So I'm going here and then I'm going back then like I normally would if it was the top position number two to that, to that one. So that's gonna be the four note away major third. That's our normal major third position we see all the time. And then the next one is gonna be five note away perfect fifth right on top of each other. And then the next one is gonna be the seven, the seven note away, five note away perfect fourth. And then the seven note away perfect fifth. Sorry, I keep on giving the fourth and the fifth mixed up. And then we go to the uh, Aeolian. So notice I'm not reaching up here this one because I already have I've already started here. So now I'm going back to uh, the Aeolian here. So we're going uh, we're going backwards and I, I forgot where I was. So I'm on the C and then I'm going back then to this A, right? All right. I'm going to stop it there, but that's that's I'm just trying to get a quick walk through of these as we go in between these. So let's go back and, and walk through this one like we normally do. So in our normal shapes, going forward, starting from the C. Before I do though, let me get a joke in here, quick joke. We'll switch things up with a joke. <clears throat> All right, practice session joke. Honestly, what's the deal with the term word salad? I've been hearing it all the time. That's, a, that's like a word salad that you're, that you're doing. What's this word salad stuff? And I, you know, I don't think this term indicates enough disdain for the nonsense being spewed most of the time these days. Word salad just doesn't do it. I mean, sal you know, it's true that salad's not generally the main course. It's like not what we look forward to, but it's something you typically at least kind of choke down just because it's healthy for crying out loud. And there's, there's nothing healthy about most of the current discord. It's not like a salad. It's 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 more like it's more like chucking down a, a, a glass of mold or something uh, without having any any penicillin to wash it down. So, I mean, the bottom line is that I think we need a, a new term here. Word salad, it's not it's not good enough. Word salad is not doing the job to properly describe the the garbage that most people you know that's out there, the common discord. So, I mean, it's more like. It's more like word gristle. Word gristle, I think, might be better. Or like it's it's like word fishbone stuck in your throat. What's up with all this word fishbone stuck in your throat stuff? It's word gruel. Word gruel is better than word salad. It's wor it's word soup skin. That's pretty gross because most of the stuff is kind of kind of gross these days too. So it's like word soup skin or word chicken chicken gizzard it's word chicken gizzard it's more like it's more like word rancid fish pie and a caramelized shaved leg hair and oyster juice crust marinated in, in slug slime with a with a with a crumble crust top of bulldog boogers that's what it's like that's what most most discord is like these days and i say no thank you no, thank you. I will pass on that. I'll pass on on the on the rancid fish pie and a caramelized shaved leg hair and oyster juice crust marinated in slime slug slime with a with a crumble crust top of bulldog boogers. I'll pass. Perhaps perhaps I could just get a nice a nice you know word salad if it's not too much trouble. Anyways. All right, so we're gonna be in the key of C here. So I can I can say how first how do I get to the key of C? If I if I look at this shape and I call this shape the Phrygian shape, then I might know that the Phrygian is gonna be the third related to the major scale. And if I start that at the three, I could say I want to get back up to the one or eight. So it'd be three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's one way I can I could see it and say okay, well there's my starting point, which is gonna be really difficult for me to finger on this guitar. <laughs> Because, but there's gonna be my starting point, right? Okay, and then, so then, 
I could say that uh, that uh, if that's my starting point, where where is it located? The majors, and and notice I'm not calling it a C so much. I'm not. You notice I'm not really trying too hard to memorize the notes. I'm trying to memorize the relative position by mode name, because again, those are the things that will all change relative when we move to like the key of G, right? When I move to the key of G, then this is no longer going to be a C that's in this box in the top right of the box, but it will be the Ionian mode. The first, it'll be the Ionian mode. So where so where does it so where does the major the first of the of the major or the, where does the Ionian live? I, I'm and that's our major mode. So I'm going to say it's at the top of the what I call the box analogy and like the penthouse that looks towards the ocean up here. That's where uh, it is at. And then the other side is on still on the box on the on the bottom side. How about the five note pentatonic scale? Then it's going to be in the barbell. So here's the barbell. And on the left hand side, you've got the heavy hitters for the minors. That's going to be the, the Phrygian and the, the, the main minor Aeolian. And then the heavy hitters on the majors, which is the major and the Mixolydian up top. And then when you're talking about the hamburger, which is shifted up, so it might be easier to see over here. It's in the base of the hamburger, the major supporting part of the hamburger, the bottom left bun. Okay. So then let's go, and then if I, if I think about this in terms of, uh, of uh, intervals, whole steps and half steps, let's say, let's walk through it that way and say if I go from the first here to uh, the second, that's pointer, that's pinky, pinky to pointer, so that's gonna be a whole step. And then I'm gonna go from uh, second to third, and we're gonna go do it, do it, that's gonna be a whole step because there's a note in between. Now I'm in this area, so I know the next one is gonna be a half step. So do do do. So now we're going from the third to the fourth. That's where the half step is. Another thing that's useful to note that if we see this in terms of the five note pentatonic scale as compared to the seven note scale, I've listed them here, right? The the, the green are the five notes that we include, the, the non colored green are the two that we exclude, which is Lydian and the Locrian. So notice that one reason we do that is possibly because it has that, that's where the half step is. And that half step is the thing that has the potential of calling, causing tension. And so by removing it, it's a little bit safer because it's more, it's less likely you're going to hit a messy note, especially as you're going between modes. So that might be an one way that we can visualize where the half step is, right? So you can say, where's, where's gonna be the half step? Well, it's gonna be, it's gonna be between in the major when, when you get to that key that's gonna be removed, right? Between three and four, it's gonna be between three and four. When I go the other way, it's gonna be, tw be, be, be it's gonna be between four down to three, right? So there's gonna be our half step. And then if I go from four to five, We've got uh, from pinky to pointer here. So the five is going to be a, a G. So that's gonna be a whole step because it goes from pinky to pointer. And then we're going from five to six. So five to six to do to do is a whole step. And then we go from six to seven. Now notice again, we have the kink in the tuning here. So that look, so so that's still a whole step, even though because we've crossed the fault line now, six to seven, and now that seven is now is now also the one that we remove. Now this one is leading into the end point. So what? So when I look at this, I have to remember that the the fourth here is when I go from uh, the it's it's when I go from the the three to the four that the half step is at. And if I look at this one, it's when I go from this one that is removed back home, the seven to the eight or back to the one that is removed. And so then that's where the half step is. So where's the half step? So if I look at it over here, it's between three and four and then seven to eight. It's, it has to do with the, th the two notes that we remove uh, in our, in our in our, if we go to a five note pentatonic, might be a useful insight that I haven't really emphasized before, that I'm trying to emphasize for myself and see if that sticks or help, helps me in any way. All right.
So let's go. So if I play, so so I could do that, of course, in open position too. Same concept over here, except we have the open notes. I'm running long on time, so I'm not going to do it again, though. Let's just go through our intervals. So we're going to say, here's the intervals. Do, 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 right there's the note I'm looking for. So now the second. So the second of the major scale is going to be a uh, two note away major second. How do I know that? Because if I go here, that would be five, four, three, two. So that's a two note away major second. And the inverse would be 12 minus two, which would be 10, 10 note away minor seven. So if I see that shape top to bottom, two note away major second, bottom to top, 10 note away minor seven. We also know that the second of Ionian is of course the second mode because we're gonna be using our our mode numbering system based on the major key. So I, so this is what I, I wanna basically memorize this numbering system as the numbering system that I'm not gonna be changing, which in the key of the Ionian or major scale is the same as the relative positions. That means that the two, three and six are gonna be the minor modes. And then of course the four, five, uh, the one, four, five are the major modes which also correspond to the major chord constructions because it means that we're talking about a minor third or a major third but knowing the whole mode is better because not only do you know whether it has a minor or major third but once we start understanding the relative positions of all the modes we know all of the other relative positions like the seventh the ninth the eleven the 13 and so on. So we could say, okay, so then where does, where does the Dorian live? It's not in the house cause it's a minor mode. So it's doing its own thing in the house analogy. It's in the double stop part of the double stop house in terms of the pentatonic analogy for the hamburger barbell. It's in the hamburger. Here's our hamburger. It's actually at the corners of the hamburger. So the Dorian, whether I'm in C major or G major, the note will change, but the fact that the Dorian will be encompassing the entire hamburger remains the same. That's the power, that's the power of knowing the relative positions, right? So then I can go to the, to the next one and then we're gonna go to the power of Grayskull. Why does Grayskull have power? I don't know, just go with it. It's a Grayskull. Aren't all skulls gray? I don't really get it. Okay, so then, then we're on the third. The third uh, of a major scale is of course a four note away major third, the defining characteristic, making it a major as opposed to a minor. Uh, uh, and, so that's good. And we know that how do I know that? Because I could say this is five and then four, four note away major third. So if I see that shape, I'm always thinking four note away major third inverse is going to be 12 minus four or eight, eight note away, which would be a uh, minor ninth. And the third of the major scale or Ionian scale is of course the third mode in our absolute numbering system which is actually a minor mode. So you might get a little confused and say, cause I was getting a little confused all, all of a sudden. It's like, wait a second. I just said it was a major, it's a major third and you're saying it's a minor, it's a uh, minor mode. And that's because it's a third away from this C. I'm, it's a major third away from the C. But if I constructed a chord from the E, from the third, I would be constructing a minor chord from this point, from the from the E, which means that the minor third is gonna be back here. So you can see here's the minor third relationship if I made a chord from it versus here where you have the major third relationship compared to the C. So beyond that, if I constructed a chord in on the third, knowing more than it's just the two, three, six that makes a minor chord, I also know that it's the Phrygian mode which has all the intervals related to the Aeolian except one, which is the second. And you can see it right here. That's the distinctive second that fits not only into the Phrygian, it fits into the Phrygian, 
and it fits into our related Ionian mode, the C Ionian and the E Phrygian, right? Because they're related modes. Okay, so then I'm going to say, well, where does the Phrygian live? Well, it's actually the minor, only minor mode that lives in the house, in the house analogy, but it's in the basement because that's the, I imagine, the metal player with that heavy minor second in what is being played. And uh, in term, and in terms of the hamburger analogy, it's going to be in the hamburger. It's hanging out with its buddy, the the minor mode Dorian on top at the top bun. It's on the right side of the top bun. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is going to be the next one. It's going to be the fourth of a major scale is a five note away perfect fourth five note away perfect fourth how do i know because there's five notes between the two strings and so the inverse is uh 12 minus five which is seven seven note away perfect fifth so if i play if anytime i see them stacked on each other five note away perfect fourth inverse therefore because the inverses of the perfects are inverses of each other it's a seven note away uh perfect fifth five note away perfect fourth top to bottom seven note away perfect fifth bottom to top and the fourth of mode number one ionian or the major scale is of course the fourth mode in our absolute numbering system which is going to be the lydian uh mode so the lydian mode we we know that the one four five will construct major chords the lydian mode therefore is a major mode and you can see it if I measure from the Lydian, there's the major third, as opposed to when I looked over here, we had a minor third away from it, right? There's the major third that fits into the Lydian, which of course also fits into the C major scale, because we would be talking about F Lydian, C major scale are the are two uh, related modes. And uh, so that's good. But also we know that the distinctive interval for the Lydian is actually the fifth. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a, it's it's the fourth, which I can memorize by saying, well, the Lydian is that funny one, mode number four, has the funny interval, which is actually the fourth interval, which is an augmented fourth, meaning meaning it pushes it up one. So you can see it right here. It looks like a flat fifth or augmented fourth. So if I play that one, that's that tensiony note that fits into the Lydian. That's kind of an oddball that I can build a chord and add that tensiony note uh, in the Lydian if I wanted to, and it would still be in the same key as the key of C in our case, because we're in the related key of F Lydian building our chord from it. All right, where does the Lydian live? It's in our house analogy. It's in the bottom right of the of the house looking towards the ocean because it's a major, it's a major uh, in, uh, uh, mode. Uh, and uh, if I look at the at the hamburger barbell analogy notice it's outside the hamburger here's the hamburger it's outside so that's the one that would not be lydian has been removed from the five note pentatonic and would have to be added which i imagine you put a hat on the hamburger so that it has a bill that's pointing forwards that's the how i visualize it which means that you also have to put a little bit on the bottom bun to stabilize the fact that you have a bill going off the top bun all right let's go back to the next one this is going to be the fifth of the fifth. So that's going to be back here, which is a G that's really hard to reach on like here. So I'm going to say boom. So that's going to be a, uh, a what is that? <clears throat> uh, a seven note away perfect fifth. So how do I know that? Because if I count down, it'll be five, 10, nine, eight, seven, seven notes away. The inverse would be 12 minus seven which would be five so top to bottom seven note away perfect fifth bottom to top five note away uh perfect fourth and the fifth of mode number one ionian or the major scale is of course the fifth mode and i know that the fifth from the major scale one four five is a major chord construction which by definition means it has a major third uh uh is a is a is a major chord construction so the major third notice you would think it would be back here because the major third related to the c is right there but no why because of the kink in the tuning the fault line means it's right underneath it so there's the major third that fits in it but i also know that the mixolydian has the distinctive 
seventh, right? It has a minor seventh. So that's going to be the distinctive note that we can basically add in when playing the mixolydian that will still fit in the key when I play G mixolydian, which is the relative key of C uh, Ionian or major. Okay, so then where does the mixolydian live? It, even though it's a major key, it doesn't live in the house in the house analogy because it has that distinctive minor seven. It hangs out with the minor and the two note per string flat shape and that five note pentatonic shape it's in the hamburger and the meat of the hamburger is what i call it all right the next one we're going to the aeolian so aeolian or the minor so that's going to be boom uh, boom it's hard to reach but we have that and so we're going to say that's going to be a uh the six is a nine note away uh, major six, I can see that because it'll be five, ten, five here, ten here, and then nine. Nine note away, major six, and the inverse would be 12 minus nine, which would be a three note away, minor third. So if I play that top to bottom, that shape, nine note away, major six, inverse, three note away, minor third, and uh, the sixth of mode number one Ionian is of course the sixth mode in our absolute mode numbering system. I know that the sixth related to the major key has a minor construction because the two, three, six are minors, meaning it's going to have a minor third, which looks like you can see it here. It looks like a major third because it has the same relation here, but because of the kink in the tuning, but because of the fault line between these two keys, that these two strings it's a minor third there and uh we also know that the aeolian in the house analogy is not in the house because it's a minor mode instead it's in the two note per string flat in terms of the hamburger analogy it's in the meat of the hamburger on the right hand side all right so then we're going to go down to the seventh so this is going to be from here down to the C. It's hard to reach that one. That one's a tough reach. Boom. Okay. And so that's going to be a a uh, 11 note away major 7. 11. How can I get that? Because it's 5, 10. And then 15 would be up here because of the kink of the tuning. 15, 14, uh, 13, uh, 12, 11 and so there's the 11 notes away inverse 12 minus 11 is one so if i played this from top to bottom which i might not be able to get a good sound that would be an 11 note away major seven bottom to top two note away minor second and then we get back to the octave all right so maybe i'll go back the other way uh next time but let's try now just to switch things up to go to the uh to the one spot perspective so now i'm gonna i'm gonna look at everything from the key of a and i'm just gonna go through these modes again but this time pivoting around the same root note which is going to be a so i'm just going to try to look at these octaves and say let's look at the major octave and then go to the major uh modes the major mode and then go to the other major modes lydian and mixolydian and see how i can change how the shape changes in terms of intervals starting from the same root which is useful because if you're playing a song that's kind of a subtle change you could make i can be in the same major key and then it's just one octave difference if i move to any of the major keys so like if i'm trying to do something a little cool like a little more interesting in a song than playing everything in one mode i could switch different modes by saying get to the related mode that we've been looking at or I can say I'm going to do the complementary mode, meaning I'm going to keep the same root position and pivot around that position. And notice how you can walk all through all the modes by doing this. Because if I changed, if I changed like from the major mode and I was subtly able to then change to the Lydian without it tweaking your ear too much, now I've moved to the Lydian. And when I'm in the Lydian, I have a whole nother set of related modes. So then I can move from there to any of the, any of the related modes here, which includes the new, the new 
note that we have over here, which happens to be locrate in this case, might be easier to move to mixolydian and then possibly pivot around the seventh, which, which would be this G, right? So then I can pivot, pivot maybe into a G minor, which might be a little bit more of a shock if I went from C major to G minor, right? I could go from, I can go from, to, from C major to like, to like a G, uh, to, to a G mixolydian or even a G major doesn't sound too out of whack, right? But maybe if I went from a C major to a G minor, that might be a little kind of wonky. But if I went from, maybe it would be better if I went from a C major, to, I mean, to a, well, if I was in an A major and then I went to like an A uh, mixolydian, or if I was in, <laughs> I, if I was in a C major, then I can go to the A minor, which would be a relative of the C major, and then I can move from there f to, from a, to an A mixolydian, right? And then from the A mixolydian, I could go to the relative G mode of the mixolydian, which would be a G minor, right? Or or some, right? or this would be a G. Actually, it would still be a G major. I don't know. I'm getting a little confused, but you get the idea. I. I probably confused everyone. I think I confused myself. I'm not going to cut cut that part out, editor. Phil, cut that out. He's not going to. I don't even know why I pay Phil. All right, let's go ahead and just, let's just do this. So if I look at this shape, this is what I'm going to call shape number two. You might call it like a major shape or a uh, uh, an E major shape. And if I just played through this shape, just one octave A to A, we got So now let's just look at those intervals. So I have, uh, let's, I, I, w I won't try to move the thing every time. I won't try to move them. I'll just, so, so I've got, that's gonna be a major, well, let's try it. It's gonna be a two note away, major second. And then what does it have? It's got a three note, a four note away, major third. And then we have the fourth, which is gonna be a five note away, perfect fourth. So that's right underneath from the A. And then what do we have? We've got a seven note away, perfect fifth. Seven note away, perfect fifth. And then what do we have? We've got a nine note away, major six. Nine note away, major six. And then we have a 11 note away, major seven. 11 note away, major seven. And then the octave. Okay, so once again, if I played through that shape, I'd say, okay. All right, let's compare that to another major mode related to, to that's complementary to the A, so the one, four, five of the majors. So now let's go down and say, do, 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 let's go to the Lydian. So the Lydian has a distinctive interval, only one interval difference, which puts us into a whole new shape. And the shape that we see now here, uh, you could call it the note two Lydian shape, you might also call it a Phrygian shape because if you start on the first note, it would be a Phrygian because there's uh, only five shapes in seven modes. There's going to be a couple shapes that are going to have multiple modes to them. And uh, we also could call it uh, a shape number four shape. Is, or we could say in the cage system, the related key is going to be uh, an E here. And that would mean that it's a, if I make a, a, a chord off of that, off of that E, it would be a C shape. C shape. Is that right? If I just play those three notes, okay. All right, and so then if I, so then if I look at that, if I just play through this, so now it sounds like we're on this A. Duh. And what's the distinctive interval? It's got then, this should be a fourth, even though I have a flat fifth, so it should be an augmented fourth. They're the same interval, but 
I need a fourth instead of a fifth in interval with two names. Okay, so let's walk through it and say, all right, well, that what does that mean then? We've got, to, to, let's just copy this and paste it and say that it still has, it's got the same major second. So Lydian has the same major second. It's got, it's a major mode. So it therefore by definition has a four note away uh, major third. That was the third. And then if I go to the fourth, it's got, this is the funny one. It says diminished fifth, but it's actually an augmented. And that's really tensiony. Augmented fourth. So that's the distinctive sound there. And then I've got then the seven note away perfect fifth. Seven note away perfect fifth. And then we've got the nine note away major six. Nine note away major six. And then the 11 note away major seven. 11 note away major seven. And then home. So then if I was to kind of noodle around with that, the, the, the funny note is once again, this one if it was if it was in the major it would be back to here right so this is the shift that those two notes are, are kind of the difference so if i didn't play those two notes i wouldn't even know what i'm in which is kind of what happens with a pentatonic and then i can try to make it majory to add uh this one to make it sound Lydian-y by going. Well, then I messed up. It's hard to, it's hard to add that one and, and not do the fifth. The fifth is in most modes. Yeah, the fifth is still there in, in, either, in both of them. It's the fourth. I keep on seeing it as a flat fifth, but the fifth is still there. It's the fourth. All right. Anyways, let's go to the next one. Let's compare this one to the possibly more popular Mixolydian, the other major mode, comparing it once again to the relative major rather than to the Lydian, right? So if I was on the major, the major was, right? And now I'm on the Mixolydian, which is what I would call shape number five. And you might also call it, uh, you might also call it the the mixolydian shape because there's only one note to start on if you start on that, that top note it would be uh mixolydian and if i looked at the related ionian d from a cage perspective you would make an a-shaped bar chord so you might call it an a-shape uh, an a-shape from a from a pentatonic uh caged perspective so let's do this one and say okay uh let's just look at the intervals it's got a distinctive seventh, uh, as we can see there, from the major. That's the one thing that's different from the major. So if I went through this, we can say, okay, it's gonna be like the same until we get to that distinctive bit. So we've got a two note away, major second, and then we've got the three note away, major third, where we would expect it to be. And then we've got a 
a five note away perfect fourth, five note away perfect fourth, stacked on top of each other. We've got the normal uh, seven note away perfect fifth that we would expect. We've got then the nine note away major six that we would expect. And then we've got then, then we've got the funny seventh, which is a minor seven, which means we no longer have the leading tone to go back home and we go back to the octave. So then, so then if I played, where's my distinctive note? These two, right? So if I'm going from a, from a, from a major key to a minor key, then if I don't include those two notes, then I'm ambiguous between those two keys until I reveal th that those two keys, right? And then now let's sound, make it sound majory. Emphasizing the leading tone. And then switch to a minor sound. And then back to the major. interesting about this one is that this is this is the one mixolydian where I can reach outside of the shape if I think about it in a three note per string shape and I've got the three pillars boom 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 so if I was in the major I'd have the two the, the bottom of the three pillars and then and then and then I don't have that last pillar because it would be in here but now I got the three pillars so that's kind of interesting from a reachy standpoint. Like if I wanted to. I don't, I, I don't really, I haven't really messed with that a lot, but I think that has a lot of potential to think about yourself as having those three notes and then also being able to move it back into this this shape, you know. But in any case, let's look at the minors now. So here's the main minor, and this is what I would call position number one. From a caged perspective, the related major is the C, so you might call it a, C, a, 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 a G shape, because you would build a G shape, which looks like that or like that. You might just call it a minor position because if I played through on on the A it would be a minor and then if I look at the intervals for the minor it's just like if I memorize the majors except that the perfects remain the same and all of the majors turn to minors except we still have a major second so here's possibly the most familiar shape to most people including me so <laughs> So then what are my intervals there? So on the minor interval, I've got still a two note away major second. And then I've got a uh, three note away minor third this time. And then I've got a uh, four, five note away perfect fourth, which is the same as the major. Perfects are the same. I've got the seven note away uh, perfect fifth, which is the same as the major. The majors are the same, or the perfects are the same. And then I've got a uh, a uh, eight note away minor six, which is totally different. And then I've got a 10 note away minor seven, 
And then I've got a octave, back to the octave. So then of course, uh, what would be the differences here would of course be all of the, all of the minors. So I kind of want to memorize this on its own to compare to the other to the other minors. So I can noodle around. <laughs> I could say, okay, well, let's go to the Dorian and see what the difference between like this and the Dorian is. Mode number two, I'm calling it. Dorian is going to be, all right, it's got all the same stuff except it has a minor, uh, a minor, uh, I'm sorry, major six. So it has all the same things. It's only going to have one interval difference and it's in the, what I might call just the Dorian uh, shape or you call it shape number three, or the related Ionian scale is uh, the G here, and you can see the G is right there. So I would make a, that would actually make a D shape from the cage system. So it'd be like a, a, a D, so you might call it from the cage perspective, a D shape. And then if I played through it, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So where's the distinctive factor? One, two, three, four, five, six. It has that major six, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna say, all right, let's just count it out here and say we go from the one to the two has a major second, just like all minor modes except the Phrygian. And then from the two to the three, We've got a minor third. That's the same as the minor mode. From the three to the four, we've got a five note away perfect fourth, which is the same for the major and the minor, because the perfects are the same and the majors the minor. And then we've got the fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth, which is the same for the majors and the minors. And then we have a funny for the minors, but normal for the major. This is where changes teams nine note away major six and then we have then back to the standard for the minor a ten note away minor seven and then the octave so if i was to switch back and forth the the funny tone would be here right this one which uh would be this one in the normal minor so if i don't play those ninths this would be the minor ninth or the major ninth in this shape it would be ambiguous as to whether i'm playing in the key of a minor or dorian right <laughs> and now let's make it sound kind of minory adding adding this this one and now let's let's remove that one and add this one to remove it out of this one. And then switch back again to the Doran.
Next, let's do the last one, the Phrygian. The Phrygian has a distinctive uh, second in it, so that changes our whole shape to be, to be what I would call shape number four again, which we saw before in the Lydian, but if you start on the first note, you could call it the Phrygian shape. So if I start on the first note, it would be Phrygian. If I started on the second note, this would be the same shape that you use for the Lydian, the major shape used for the Lydian, because again, there's seven modes and only five shapes. So it looks like, and then you, you also might call it from a, a caged system. Here's the F down here. So that would be once again, a C shape. Here's the F, du, 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 C shape, which could be like that, right? Or that would be, anyway. Uh, so, so now I'm gonna say, okay, has a distinctive second. So let's analyze the intervals here. So now you've got the second, which is that minor second, one note away minor second. That's the funny one right away. That's why it's kind of easy to remember that. Like Phrygian's got the crazy second right off the bat. And then it's got the minor third. You think it's totally crazy, but then it like it's normal after that. It just starts off crazy. It's like the, the crazy fighter that's the, the crazy heavy set fighter that comes out in a and starts swinging like a like a madman for about two seconds, <laughs> and then and then it's back to just and then he's just normal after that. It's all over. So then we're gonna go. We'll say the 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 fourth is a five note away perfect fourth. Like, this guy's crazy. Oh no! Wait a sec. It's just like a barrage that we start off with. I see what's happening here. This is going to be a seven little way perfect fifth. And then we've got like a uh, eight note away major six. And then a 10 note away, uh, that was a minor six by the way, 10 note away minor seven. And then back to the octave. to the major. Back to the Phrygian. stop it for there.